This massive D23 Expo edition of Communicor Weekly is brought to you by the Silly Symphony Collection. This 16 record set has the complete restored soundtracks to all 75 Silly Symphonies by Randy Thornton. All new liner notes from Disney historians J.B. Kaufman and Russell Merritt, and it also includes digital downloads for the entire set. Now, this box set is unlimited, and each copy is foil stamped with a unique number. Pre order yours today at sillysymphonycollection.com, and when you pre order, you get a copy of the Skeleton Dan slash uh, Three Little Pigs 10 inch right away. And I saw it at the D23 Expo, and it was amazing. Also, one of you lucky cadets is actually going to get a copy of that 10 inch single at the end of the show for the year of a million or so limited time cadets. Hello, welcome to Communicore Weekly, the greatest online show. I'm Leo. And I'm Jeff. And this is our, our big D23 super special extra-sized episode. Are you excited? Yes. Are you gonna, you're going to tell us all about D23? Yeah. That's it? Yeah, you can't shake your head. They can't see you shake your head. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to just go into it so they can, they can hear what you have to say about D23? Yes. Okay, here we go. Just quickly, before we jump into the massive D23 trip report, I kind of jump around all weekend. You know, Leo and, I spent, Leo and I spent some time at D23. We recorded a segment there. Um, we also uh, recorded a segment back at my house. We did uh, a Five Like a Goat there. But also, we brought some other friends onto the show, uh, Roscoe Soul Train and Colin and that Raptor. Um, and we also talked to Philip Swift at the Dark Side of Disney uh, documentary premiere. And also James from Creepy Kingdom there as well. So this is a massive fun-filled weekend. So many things happen. It's not just D23 Expo, and it's not just the news that happened, because you can get that anywhere. It's just our thoughts and impressions about how the weekend went, and also uh, after the premiere of the Dark Side of Disney documentary, which was really, really good, and not at all what anyone thinks it is. So, definitely check it out, and now here we go for the D23 episode extravaganza. Hi everyone, it's Jeff and I'm here at the D23 Expo 2015. It's Sunday. We were supposed to record all weekend, but it's been super crazy, so I didn't have a chance to. But I'm sitting here now with the one and only Captain Leo. Say hello, Leo. Hello. How you doing? Good. So, what has been your favorite parts of the Expo so far that you've seen? Well, maybe it was hearing about the Tron roller coaster and stuff like that. In Shanghai, where they're putting it? Yeah. So why don't we talk about the Shanghai Pavilion? What did you see in the Shanghai Pavilion aside from the Tron roller coaster? We saw that. Well, I don't remember that well. Do you remember the the, the stuff from the new Pirates of the Caribbean? Did you see the 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 videos they had for it and the big treasure chest and everything? Um, no, I didn't no. see that. No. Well, uh, how about let's. See. Well, you saw the Tron roller coaster thing, the video. And did you see all the shops and the new Fantasyland rides that are going in and all that stuff? Yeah, and they're also adding a Buzz Lightyear jetpack thing. That looked pretty cool, right? It used to be um, a Rocketeer thing, but I think they changed it to Buzz Lightyear. That, yeah, that's what uh, that's what you told me. That, that On Friday we saw that. What else did we see? We saw the Avatar model on Friday? Oh yeah, that was awesome. What did you like about that? Was there anything that stuck out in your mind about it or you just liked it overall? Wait, where was the Avatar thing? Uh, remember we watched that video about the people going to Pandora and then we walked into the other room and they had that big model of Avatar and the lights kept going off so you could see what it looked like at night? Oh yeah, that was awesome. And then there was the, uh, the blue guy that was next to him. You just go everywhere. We are everywhere. <laughs> Who is he? He's somebody that listens to the podcast. What's his name? His name is Ben. So you can say hi, Ben, and we'll hear this later. Say hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. <laughs> 
So what else have you seen here that you really, really liked? Oh, uh, well, we did like, um, well, Jeff wasn't there for it, but I saw this theater thing, mm -hmm. and there's a secret, don't tell anybody, it's that they're going to make Frozen into a musical. On Broadway, right? Yeah. Did you see that here? Yeah. Where did you see that here? In one of the panels? Yeah, I think it was in, it was in the theater panel. Oh, yeah. the You went to the, the concert, right? Yeah, and they only sung one Newsies song, and I was waiting for them to sing it, but I wanted there to be, like, three because everything else got three of them. You really like Newsies, don't you? Yeah, but there was only one song. Which song did they sing? Was it Seize the Day? No, it was Believe... Um, it was Something to Believe in. Oh, okay. Did you know that I saw Newsies? I know, your dad told me that you saw Newsies. I was gonna review it, but I can't because it's not recently had the opportunity anymore. <laughs> That's okay, we can pretend that you recently had the opportunity. You can still review it. I'm sure people but would still like to hear it. I don't remember it barely. Well, I guess that means your dad has to go take you again. Yeah, if it comes to California. Oh, what, are you gonna be out in California? Yeah, because I'm leaving on Wednesday, I think. You're going home on Wednesday, back home? Yeah. Well, where, what else did you see? You saw the oh, sorry, you saw the, the Broadway theater concert thing? Yeah. And they sang all a bunch of uh, songs from the Broadway shows? Yeah, like Tarzan and... Did they do Little Mermaid? Yeah, they have Little Mermaid. What else? Beauty and the Beast? Beauty and the Beast. Aladdin? Aladdin. I'm just making, I'm just saying all these movies and you're agreeing with me. I didn't see it, you saw it. And there was Newsies, I already told you that. <laughs> there was... I don't remember what other Broadway, Mary Poppins? Yes! Yeah, that's the one. How could we forget Mary Poppins? Yeah, and Ashley Brown sung it. Was she really good? Yeah. What, what other panels did you go to? Um, I don't remember yesterday. You don't remember yesterday? It was just yesterday, though. Did you go to... Did you go to the Pixar panel, right? Yeah, because there was too many people, and they filled all the seats, and I couldn't get in, and I started crying after. Because you were upset? Yeah, so... So my dad's friend, Rai, should have told the guy who um, directed that to... Um, to let you in? Um, to just of let us go in the handicapped spots if there was any left. Yeah. Well, at least you got to see the broad. I know the Broadway one was the one yeah, you really wanted to see. Yeah, that's really only the panel that I actually wanted to do. But the home movies one was good, right? Oh yeah, we did see the Disneyland home movies. Yeah. All the old footage from the early days of the theme park. Yeah, and some of them were even in color. Which, that's crazy for that old, right? Mm -hmm. I can't believe your dad's in color sometimes because he's older than some of those movies. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> How about all the exhibits that are on the floor? What Did you have a favorite exhibit you saw? Um, no, but I really did like the Disney Dream Store. That's where I got a cool pin. Mar okay, so who got you that pin? Martina, Jeff's fiance. <laughs> And what, what pin is it? It's a Star Wars pin? Yeah, it's called Force for Change. Uh-huh. And what else did you get? You got a whole bunch of other stuff. You, you got like a, a, an R2-D2 droid? Yeah. And I got Jimmy Cricket. Oh, your, your uh, trading card Jimmy Cricket? Yeah. And what else happened here today or this weekend? Oh, the, to all the new Star Wars stuff they talked about for the parks. Are you excited oh, yeah. for that? Yeah. What are, you, what are you most excited about for Star Wars Land? I don't know, but I hope they add Star Tours there. You know they're going to add a new part to Star Tours for the new movie? A new destination to go to? Yeah, it's, it's for Episode 7, right? Yeah, it is for Episode 7. That's going to be a lot of fun. And yeah, and it's else? probably going to be so crazy and it even goes upside down in one part. Upside down? Wait, I don't want to go on that. Probably even more crazy. Um, probably even more crazy than Mission to Mars is to be. That was pretty crazy, wasn't it, Mission to Mars? That was a long time ago. Wait, have you been on Mission to Mars? No, but that I'm tall older enough than to you. go on every single ride. You are. 
all the new, they had the live action panel where they showed clips from Captain America and Doctor Strange. I didn't Strange. go there. You didn't go to that. I didn't go to that one either. But they gave everyone Star Wars posters for that one too. And they're giving out, um, wait, did you get one of those Luxor Junior balls? Yes, Martina stood in line yesterday and she got one of those balls. I didn't get any. I, we tried to get one this morning, but they were all gone. Well, so before we, we wrap it up, what were you doing right now with your dad? What are you waiting for? We're waiting for the Mickey's of Glendale store. What, it has reason? a humongous line, and my dad's almost at the front, probably. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see where he is. I don't really see him that much. But how long do you think the line is? Like, maybe two hours. That's crazy, isn't By it? the way, George isn't here. <laughs> That's right, George. You're not here. What do you think about that? Are you are you upset that George isn't here? Yeah. You miss George? Yeah. I miss but, George too. I'll see him in a couple weeks. But he spent all of them. But he spent all the money instead of going there, coming to our house. Oh, that's true. That's right, George. You did go visit Captain Leo without me, so I guess we're even now. Except I got to hang out with him here at D23, and you're longer. stuck at home. Yeah, longer. Okay, so anything, anything else you want to say before we stop? What did you say? <laughs> Come here. Is there any last things you want to want to say about the expo before we we stop the trip report? Wow. Any tips for anyone? Yeah. What what tips would you give them for maybe for the next expo? Next expo, whoever wasn't here should come. <laughs> well, that's a good tip. It's every other year. It is every other year. So the next one will be 2017. Yeah. Are you going to come out for that one too? Yeah. Okay. But it, this is only the fourth D23 ever. It is only the fourth. I'm sure they're going to have them forever now though. Right? Yeah. Until Disney World or Disneyland blows up. What? Until it blows up? Where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> I just thought that. <laughs> All right. So thank you for listening to our trip report. You want to say goodbye to everyone that's listening? Bye. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Hop, step, jump, and skip. We took a trip. And this is our trip. Okay, so it's just after the dark side of Disney premiere here in gorgeous Santa Ana, California. And I am here with Philip Swift, the uh, director of the dark side of Disney, and also James from Creepy Kingdom. How are you guys doing today? Top of the world, Ma. Top of the world. We're doing, I mean, we're doing good. Top of the world, I guess. That, so I mean, That's a weird introduction to my voice. People think I talk like that. Top of the world, Ma. That top happens of the world. to me all the time. I'll go into like a new like environment where I don't know anyone. And I'm like, hey, everybody. And then I'm like, oh, wait. They don't know I don't talk like that. You do that weird voice. I do the same thing. Where I do a really bizarre voice, and I'm like, oh, I'm kind of stuck doing this voice now. I'm just going to commit to it. It's fine, guys. It's this totally is not my voice. All right. I'm yeah. going to totally follow this guy forever. Yeah. So we, we just watched the movie in... And it's the east. Uh, sorry, the West Coast premiere of the film. Um, how did you get the idea to do the film to begin with, Philip? Uh, the idea came to me uh, after I made my last film, The Bubble, uh, which is about Celebration Florida. Um, I was trying to find ways to kind of promote the film when it was done and try to make some sales. And I had read The Dark Side of Disney, Leonard Kinsey's book, and so I sent him a copy of The Bubble, and I said, this is right up your alley. Like, I think you're really going to appreciate it. He watched the film. He really liked it. And then we kind of just had email conversations back and forth for a little while about like the weird, you know, sort of dark side of Disney. And then it came time, like, uh, I had to make another movie. Like, that's just how it is. You know, when you're a creative type, like, you, yeah, it, yeah, it gets in your blood. You're like, I gotta f***ing do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so I, uh, I really thought about how... Um, Leonard's book was like, such a great like a way to like uh, do how to do the bad things at the park or not bad things but the adult things at the park. It told you how to do them, um, but the questions I had was more about the why. Like why are you why why do people have to do these things? Um, and so I started talking to some people, and the one person I really talked to that made uh, me realize what a film could be was talking to my mom. My mom and I shared this sort of like dark side moment where we scattered my grandmother's ashes in the park. Uh, and st after talking with her and really like thinking about that story, it made me realize that there had to be other people out there that have kind of like blurred the line, crossed the line, bent the line, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then talking more with uh, Leonard, I realized I could be connected to a lot of them. And uh, he sort of gave me, half-heartedly, reluctantly, gave me his blessing to sort of uh, make a documentary that was sort of an ins inspired by. At the beginning, I was saying adaptation of the book, but really it became more of like an inspired by the dark side of Disney. Uh, and that's the film you saw tonight. 
So when when this first came about, like I remember you and I talked briefly when you were filming, and even like Kent and I were talking about it, and we're like. I don't know, man. I hope this has, like, become, like, a bad thing. But, like, even watching the film, like, a month ago when I saw the rough cut, even tonight, it's not about doing these bad things. It's just, I was telling James, it's about, like, the emotional heart of these alternate people that go and visit and love Disneyland. And I think it's a, it's a wonderful film. It's got a lot of heart. It's got a lot of story. It hits you right in the feels a lot of times. And I, I think that is a fantastic thing. Did that just come out in the editing later on? Or is that where you're going for when you're doing it? Well, I think if you look at like the, the other work I've done in the past, the other documentaries I've made, they all kind of have that kind of vibe to them. I, I like to think uh, that like the, my vibe is like a depressed, nostalgic vibe is what I'm going for <laughs> most of my film. Yeah. <clears throat> so this film really captures it well with like the kind of VHS aesthetic and, and kind of it's the best way. I, all of my memories I had, I had a conversation with my mom about this. Like, uh, all of my memories are in like VHS. Like, I have like bad like auto tracking going on. Like, every time I think about being a child, like it's it's I gotta like fix the tracking on it to make sure it's right because that's just the way I remember things. Um, and so that vibe, that kind of the sad nostalgia, is just something that I really appreciate. It's like a, a feeling that, that I think people can relate to, especially like our generation, the people that were raised like with um, the availability of memories. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah. Like we had to work hard. Like if you're like, oh, I really want to see that movie, we had to like go out and like find it and whatever that movie may be, uh, and then and then be able to go home and watch it again. The kids today, the kids, these kids today, um, they can just go on Netflix <laughs> and like just the think of it and it starts playing in their head. Yeah, right. <laughs> But like we had to like work hard, and so I think I don't know. Anyways, what the the point I'm getting at is that um, the the kind of vibe and the flow of the story came through in the editing. Is really where it comes together for me. That's why I love documentary filmmaking. Uh, you work with narrative. You have a script. You have actors. You have lights. And you really think about what you're doing. In documentary, you can kind of just walk out the door and start talking to people. And then in the editing room, you can kind of piece the story together. Yeah. And I think it's what we saw uh, definitely happen with the Dark Side of Disney. So James. You are one of the featured people in the film. Do you, I mean, before the film, did you consider yourself dark side of Disney? Or you're just like an alternate lifestyle of seeing all the weird, creepy stuff of the Disney theme parks? I never consider myself a dark sider per se because I have a huge guilt complex. So I remember the first, <laughs> I remember the first time I read Leonard's book. <laughs> I was like, I could never do any of this. The whole time, like, they know I'm here. They know I'm doing this. I wouldn't be able to enjoy myself. I could never do those things. (laughs) Like, especially the ways of trying to, like, you know, sneak in the parks and, like, you know, all that. I'm like, like, I just couldn't do it. Like, it's particularly the one I think, uh, he says, at a busy night, when the uh, fireworks end, just stand at the exit. <laughs> and I thought, I'm like, I'm like, I thought, I was like, I can maybe do that. I'm like, no, the whole no, time, no. the whole time, I'd be like, they're on me. <laughs> they're gonna <laughs> kick me out of here. <laughs> the real paranoid part of it really kicks in at that point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but, I've, but I, 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 what is what I enjoyed about Leonard's book was actually the stories of him, you know, going in the Utilidors and all that. That was my favorite part of the book when I first read it, so. That's a big thing that I feel like uh, people, when they first heard I was making this movie, like, people be like, how dare you look at the dark side of Disney? There's no such thing! So uh, Disney's <laughs> only light and wonderful and beautiful. But I think that the true fans are the people that absorb all of it. Like, yeah. you want to yeah, know yeah. everything. You want to flip over the rock and you want to see what's underneath, you know? Uh, and I, But that's what I love about you, James, is that you have this, like, the creepy kingdom sort of like brand which to me is part of the dark side like the fact that you even come out and say like creepy kingdom I imagine have you ever had any blowback from that like people being like how dare you call it creepy not to my face (laughs) not to your face (laughs) I don't think a lot of people realize like how often Disney stuff and like the weird dark stuff actually intersect with each other like I I saw you last weekend at Scare LA like Clearly, there's there's a large section of people that love the lighthearted Disney stuff and also love the really weird, messed up stuff of like horror stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, so, yeah. is that how Creepy Kingdom like came about to begin with? Yeah, I mean, it was basically I wanted to get into Disney podcasts, right? And and I'm like, there's so many. I'm like, what's my angle? And I thought about what I'm into, and I was like, I always love all the dark, creepy stuff. I'm into the horror films, but I'm also into Disney films. I'm also going to go into the park, and I'm like. And actually, I wanted to listen to a podcast about creepy Disney stuff. And I was like, well, this doesn't exist. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll just do it. <laughs> so, so that was pretty much how it came to be. And, uh, and as far as I know, there's only one other creepy Disney podcast. 
Communicore Weekly. Remember, yeah, Communicore Weekly. Fair With point, the ghost guys. whistle. <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. So, uh, all right, let's let's do this a little backwards. Where can people find Creepy Kingdom? You can go to creepykingdom.com, but Creepy Kingdom on any social media thing. They, no, no one beat me to it. I got them all. <laughs> And Philip, how can people hear more about the film and see if there's a screening near them or a video on demand? Where's that coming? Uh, one of the biggest things they can do is they can go like the film on Facebook. It's the Dark Side of Disney, a documentary film. Uh, that way they'll be up to date on anything, any news that comes down the pipe. Uh, we will be doing a screening in Orlando on November 15th. Is that official? That's, we're, let's say it's official now. I haven't actually booked anything, <laughs> but I do have one person who bought like a plane ticket already and it's like already oh, coming. So it, it has to happen at it this point. It has to happen. Better real, somewhere. There's going to be like one dude like alone, like what? Why? Oh, no. Uh, so otherwise they can check out um, dsoddoc.com uh, as in dark side of Disney doc.com um, they can check that out for uh, you know any sort of excerpts and clips and trailers and news it's all there and I definitely highly recommend it it was fantastic I loved it thank you both for uh, joining me briefly and uh, definitely check out Creepy Kingdom and the Dark Side of Disney documentary thank you Jeff thank you Jeff jump <laughs> So we're here at the Disneyland Hotel. We got Roscoe Soul Train. We got the Raptor. We got Colin, and we're gonna talk a little about D twenty three and Disneyland. So, Roscoe and Colin, you guys went to the expo. What? what let's start with the Roscoe. What? What did you like about the D twenty three Expo twenty fifteen? Um, I liked that. A lot of my favorite YouTubers were there, and I got a chance to meet them and pitch ridiculous, crazy ideas <laughs> to them, and <laughs> hopefully I'll, they'll be accepting of those crazy ideas, but we'll see. Who knows? That was my favorite part about D23, is that, yeah, there was cool people there. Definitely. How about you, uh, Colin? What'd you, what you like about it? I, I'm thinking about it, and I honestly want to add a lot more to this, but all I can think of is the red carpet. Oh, Because nice. we were just shooting, we were shooting a lot the whole time. And I feel like that was what I was doing the whole time was shooting just a video. Shooting. But there was a lot of really cool stuff there to look at, definitely. It was really cool seeing the new Star Wars stuff um, and the red carpet. And it was super cool seeing, uh, doing the speeder bike yeah, that was cool. picture. That was pretty yeah. fun. Let's, see, let's talk about what are and the, the, the low. Let's go. The, <laughs> and the red carpet. Since yeah. we did the highs, we got we to gotta do the lows. So what was the low? What was the, the biggest Wait, disappointment? Before you go into the low, let me just elaborate what you said. You, I mean, basically you both touched upon what I've been saying for years. To me, it's not about the panels and, like, the stuff that Disney is doing. It's about meeting the people that you like and, like, hanging out with them and doing stuff with them. And, like, like you, we're, we got all these people to be in this video that we're going to do, and it's great hanging out with them. All right, now, yeah. now the lows, like you were saying. Uh, you know, I would say the lows is what would be the, um, the miscommunication between the uh, convention workers and the Disney employees. It didn't really feel like anybody really could get a handle on anything and it's hard when you're dealing with so many moving parts and uh, the masses of crowds and people um, but it was it was sad to see people waiting in a three or four hour line where other people were able to walk right up to the front um, and just bypass the entire thing and I'm not going to say if I was on the the receiving Wh which end of some of those on. but at the same time it, it, I, you know you, you feel bad when you when things happen that way and uh, that, I would say that was probably the low point is, is seeing just the lack of communication between the mismanagement, the mismanagement of the whole event, yeah. basically. J just to clarify what Ross is talking about, uh, you're talking about in the morning, people getting in. Like, people were literally waiting in line. I think the floor opened, like, at 10 a.m. most days, oh and God, some yeah. people were, st like, were waiting in line until 12.30 just to get onto the expo floor. Yeah. Right. Meanwhile, yeah. other people yeah. were getting in, like, randomly at random access points. Yeah. And it, it was kind of a mess, but it wasn't any different from the last time around. It, right. it was the same type of thing. And same problem. It's, right. yeah, right. I don't know, it's weird. It's a lot of moving parts. I, yeah, yeah. So I can't follow them too much, but you think this, what, this is their fourth one? They should have gotten a little better at it by now, and none of the other conventions especially, I've been to here, like Anaheim, when, but were like, like that. San Diego Comic-Con goes down only a few hours away. Yeah. And they kind of have it down and to that the is, science. And that is the biggest thing known to mankind, so if... You know, if you you as a big company like Disney can't analyze, you know, your competitors in some regards, because that's why they announced all the Marvel and Star Wars stuff at D23, not SDCC, is right. because of competition, yeah, exactly. because of IP and all that good junk. So, 
Right, and once you once you put that into consideration and say like, oh well, they're willing to acknowledge this, but not acknowledge like how to properly operate a convention where forty thousand people were there at the previous one. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have problems, yeah. and of course, San Diego has had terrible problems with overcrowding and sure. all, all of that stuff. But guess what? You know, they they're still the biggest thing in conventions. They yeah. know what they're doing, and they know right. what they're doing now at this point. Exactly. And people were getting in without their badges and, and everything. You know, yeah. multiple checkpoints, and they're getting through, no problem. I saw one guy look at a line that wasn't even that long and immediately say, I'm not waiting in this line, walk around the stairway, and just walk right in. <laughs> no one stopped him. Yeah. Nobody cared. You know, I definitely saw a little bit of disorganization, but I don't think it's as bad as you guys are making it sound. <laughs> I, I didn't feel I like it was there. that bad. I'm just saying, like, you know. I, was the, I don't know. It, I don't know. It, the, the, the real problem to me, the red carpet. I don't know if anybody <laughs> else has wrong with the red carpet, but every time I think back to D23, all I'm seeing is red carpet, right. and I wish I could remember more things from it, but it's just red carpet. Why red is it carpet. sticking out of your mind Storm so much? Stormtrooper, red carpet. I don't know. Just I thought it was great. Seriously, like, visually, when I access my mind right now, red carpet. See, you're saying red with carpet. Some blue. I'm thinking, blue the, I'm thinking I'm thinking that gray carpet in that one booth that was like walking on the cloud. Oh, and every time you would step up onto it, I tripped on it every single time. Because it was time. Like yeah, oh, yeah. a half an inch higher. Every yeah. single time I tripped on it. Yeah. And I thought that was really unfair yeah. for them to make no me look fa- so foolish yeah. in front of all these cool people. <laughs> but you didn't fall. <laughs> no, I didn't fall. There was I no would, Roscoe's I would, you know, stack. I wish I would have fell inside because that would have, well actually, I blasted my knee on a <laughs> on a rock wall, but for for a, a good cause, which <laughs> you'll see in a few weeks. Cause. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Jeff, what was your talk about your highs and lows of of uh, D twenty three? I mean, like I just said, the high was totally hanging out with everyone. Like especially Saturday when we shot all day. I think like, I had a blast. Like Saturday was my favorite day for all that. Yeah. Um, I really don't care that much about the panels. I saw one panel Friday, uh, the home movies panel, which was cool, but I didn't care about anything else. Mm-hmm. I knew it was going to be on social media within seconds, so who cared? But yeah, hanging out with the people, meeting new people, and people you interact with for years online, that's always oh, the best part. Oh, and yeah. low, yeah, that's right. Low, I think, was... Yeah. Everything else, I, I mean, I don't have to. I'm like, I don't want to say I had a bad time. I had a good time. Yeah. It was just that I just don't think I enjoy going to conventions like this anymore. It was pretty overwhelming. Yeah, there's so much going on at once. Yeah. It's just madness yes. all the time. It's just. I, I don't had know. this. I had this great idea that I was going to spend all this money that I didn't have and <laughs> come out with all this crazy oh, stuff. And literally, I didn't buy a single thing. And I, and Which is insane when you yeah. think about it. Yeah. Because yeah. we were waiting. Insane. Yeah, there was a lot of waiting around and, and, and just kind of tinkering in little sections. But literally, I spent z- I spent more on a cup of coffee at than G23. I did on merchandise. I spent yeah. seven dollars. Yeah. I spent seven dollars. Like and there the was was you were asking me I Logan was money. asking me um, if there was a there was a special D twenty three Walt shirt that was there. Yeah, it had the castle and Walt and like a bunch of like nineteen fifty five stuff to kind of commemorate like. Expo's going on, 60th's going on. I, there was, I didn't on. see it. You know what? It, that had to be in one of the three like stores that you had to wait two hours in line. Yeah. Absolutely. To get into. Yeah. And, yeah. And you know what? And it's like I, I would have absolutely, you know, like you know, square cashed you the twenty five bucks yeah. or whatever for the t shirt. But it's like I would have, I would rather like do something bad than, yeah. and then yeah. ever right. wish then wait, like, that make my friends have to wait to get me a yeah. Well, they were t shirt, you know. Yeah, right. And I, I, could, I had a hard time even finding those stores. Because there was oh, just yeah. it was such a hodgepodge horrid. of a flea market esque. It was. It was like the wild. OC marketplace for me, to be <laughs> honest with you. It was. It was really. I mean, that's but that's okay. It's cool. Well, let's go on it to happens, let's man. let's talk about what the next thing that we did, which was today, which was the Dark Side of Disney movie premiere. Yes. Which Logan the Raptor was actually the main. The star, star of the show, star. I do yeah, believe. Took name, please. The the, the Raptor. Oh, that, Raptor. That, that Raptor was the star of the show. Um, yeah, I'm like, I'm getting really angry that my name is in the movie. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, you you really are the breakout star of that yeah. film. And I think, yeah. like, yeah, you do some way. bad, like, quote-unquote bad things yeah, in the yeah. film on camera. Absolutely, but but, but you are the, you make it a lot of heart. Well, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, I, I really I really did, like, definitely bonded with Leonard Kinsey on that level of, like, I was, like, you know, like a younger generation who was on that same, like, just like warpath on just like doing my own thing 
if the rules don't adhere to my rules, then they're those those rules get thrown out of the book. Yeah. So, and you know what? You know, I yeah, I've done stuff I totally regret as to like you know getting in trouble at the parks and don't do it. Seriously, don't do. It. I tell that to everybody. Don't be in. Don't be stupid. Don't get in trouble. Yeah. If you get kicked out of the park, you're gonna feel like the biggest dummy on the planet, and. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemies, right. and that's saying something because there's some there's a lot of people I don't like. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so like you know what, and, and there's a lot of people in the Disney community I would love to get like hauled off by security. <laughs> Trust me, don't do, I don't get that twisted either. But it's like that's one of those things that's like whoa, whoa there. Um, uh, that movie was fantastic. I thought what I was doing that weekend was like. Wacky, but then I also kind of remembered a lot of the crazier stuff we, I didn't catch on film because I wasn't with Phil and the gang. I was hanging out with like my own friends at Magic Kingdom, which I'm kind of glad because then I would have been in a, you know a lot heftier of some trouble. You know? Yeah, Fair but enough. you didn't really get in the way of any guest experience. No, and that's no, and that's my that's my whole thing is like you know nobody was hurt. No, 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 no. What my whole like that's what I told James at the uh, at the uh, Wiener Schnitzel we were at. Um, you know, like, <laughs> Wiener, Wiener Schnitzel. It's like you know, you can you can say what you will about what I do in the film, but in comparison to some dude bro frat guy who got hammered at Epcot and is like puking his brains out or like punches a cast member in or, full like, view of everyone in, there in, in yeah. plain daylight, just like absolute unacceptable behavior. Whereas I keep to myself, I put on headphones, and I'm in my zone. I'm not like. I don't breach personal space, especially no. because of, like, who I am as a person and, like, me especially appreciating yeah. personal space. Totally, in that totally. You know, it's, and, like, yeah, seriously, dude, like, I've gone, there's been, like, three or four times I've gone to, like, the UK bathroom at Epcot, and there's someone puking their brains out from getting drunk, and you can, you know... I have seen that before as well. Of course you have. Yeah, you've been we there. All ha- we've you've, all seen you've it. You've all seen the Epcot pukage, and it's mm. like, you know, yeah. Like I said, I, I do some stuff that's not necessarily up to par with Disney uh, standards and procedures, but guess what? I don't think people having 12 drinks at Epcot is really uh, up their alley either. No, right? no, and no. I, you know, it's that's like, not very uh, Disney, Disney well, it's, side. It's, like, it's, a, it's just kind of like a double standard. It's like, well, well, booze is legal, but it's like public intoxication's not, even though it's private property. That's you it's know still, that's yeah. that's kind of a flaky argument. Sorry, sorry to bring up like the legal aspect of it, but yeah, it's like I I I'm very happy with uh, my part in the film uh, to an extent. There's one portion I really am not happy about, but uh, and everybody else loved it. Everybody else, else loved loves it, it, and I hate it. But but that's like that's, that's I, only I, personal I feel, thing. I, feel, I totally understand yeah, that. Though. And it's, yeah, it's, it was just I was I to was, us. It I really was, creates an I emotional extro- core about your story. I was extraordinarily I, okay. That's cool. So and the uh, Orlando screening, I'll just walk out before then. <laughs> before it happens. Yeah. Just, I'll just but the, go. that's like artistic integrity kind of stuff. Where you're like we're always our own worst critics. Absolutely. Nobody no. wants to see no. themselves do something well, on camera that they all come to regret. Yeah. Well, it's not. I don't think. Not I don't. No, I will never. But you're not it. your best performance, is what you're. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Like it's it's just like, is. and like I said, I feel like it was very clever of Phil to do that, as opposed to play the song and catch a f- lawsuit. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, very slick of him. And I, and it's funny too because that was my idea, and now I'm like, oh, God. now you hate it. Now, now you're like, not on oh, board for the idea God, whatsoever. Why did I do anything? So you know, it's it's funny. It's it's kind of ironic. So that I that I would recommend something and like be like, all right, well, let's do this, and then hate it completely. And then, and then as hate soon as completely. I watch it, I'm like, oh my goodness, why did I do bad that? Bad idea. Man? It's okay though, man. You know what? Like, I know, I know, my lady friend will love it. I know my family will love it. Like, <laughs> I know everyone. Will everyone love else me. will love everyone it. Everyone loved it at the for you. screening, and like, Dude, I, I, st- lost I it. stood up for the Q and A, and the crowd went wild, and yeah. I felt like I was like. Mick Jagger or something. It was crazy. All that I felt matters. like I just won like an Oscar. It was cool. And really, the only applause that happened during the entire movie was at the end of the Raptor segment. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. That it's was the only true. time anyone yeah, broke out in like full on juiced. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So for sure. if we all, all right, let let's do this. Do a quick little wrap up in like five words or less for D twenty three. How you felt about the weekend? Uh, and Roscoe. Ouch, my knee hurts. Fair, Colin. <laughs> D twenty three was neat. He was actually counting off the words on his fingers as he said it. Raptor. Disneyland's t- 
tight fam. Dark side swag. That was six. I'll take it though. <laughs> no. No. Dark side. Dark side is one. Oh, dark, oh, dark side is one word now. Yeah. I didn't know that. In the, in the yeah. raptor Depends dictionary. Depends on what side of the force you're on. Per- perfect. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for making my weekend complete. Oh, dude, I had, uh, I had a I love you guys. Time. I love you, buddy. I'm moving out here, fam. <laughs> Watch me. We got it on record. Raptor's yeah, coming, oh you guys. God. He's coming. Rawr. Rawr. Captain Leo, he can be your hero. Avert the crisis, he's actually your vices. Captain Leo, make your best up in the air, Miss He, Hello, this is Leo. Um, we're here um, to get Jeff out of the police station. He was crazy at D23. All right, so now I have some very special guests from the Drunk on Disney podcast. Gentlemen, introduce yourselves. My name is Guy Hutchinson. My name is Dana Snyder. Thank you for for coming aboard. Uh, Guy will be reviewing your book very, very shortly because George actually just got it and it's great. But I wanted to hear your thoughts on uh, the D23 Expo. What what days did you did you go? I, I was only there on Saturday. I went Friday and Saturday. Now what did what were your like initial thoughts on the expo? Was there anything like particularly stuck out at you that you really enjoyed or you didn't like? T- t- tell tell me your your feelings. I it was much bigger than I thought it would be. I mean it was huge. First off, I've been to every one. All four so far. That's correct. Okay. Guy has never been to one of these yeah. before. Okay. So he has first time initial impressions of what the whole thing was. I was just giving background of what yeah, you're about yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I've been to a lot of conventions, and this was, I mean, it was gigantic. And there were so many people there, and it was so segmented. Like, there were all these different, you know, divisions that you could go to. Uh, I really liked it. I loved, my favorite thing was the Avatar. Out of all the stuff I saw, was Pandora. You know, yeah, the, in the, the Imagineering that. Pavilion. Yeah, which I thought was fascinating. I love, I mean, I, I love seeing a model. They had a model that was probably... 20 feet by 20 feet, which was just amazing to see in person. I really liked how they did the transition from night to day every, yeah, like, yeah. 20 seconds. I thought that was uh, that was pretty awesome. How, how about you, sir, Dana? The one thing I thought about this one was I found it extremely confusing to get around and find what was what. Yes. There was no, like, this is the Imagineering Pavilion. There was just, like, weird signs for Ace or Art Tech or whatever <laughs> that thing was called. And there was, like, right. people standing in line. I was like, what's this line for? Like, this is the Stage Pass line. What line's this? And then how they broke up the Emporium into three different things. It just wasn't like one side was all the guys selling old guidebooks. Yeah. It was very confusing walking around this time. Maybe I'm just confusing. No, no, no. But I totally agree. Because it was like it wasn't just like I mean, some of them was fine, but like it would be like the backside of the parks and resorts or the studio thing. But if you're on the backside of it, you had no idea what it was. They had and a lot of blockage, just, so you couldn't see into certain yeah. things. And you had no people were just standing in line. You were like, I, I literally asked one, "What are you standing in line for?" And they said, "I don't know. I saw people standing yeah. in line." Yeah. But then, like by contrast, the archives exhibit this time was totally open. I yes. mean, even if you walk by the side, you could see all the stuff. Did you stand in line to get in, or did you just no, walk by? we did not go in. I walked by the day before, uh, and I'd seen pictures of it when they were setting it up. Mm-hmm. I That's mean, it. it looked great. Yeah. We we admittedly went two days, but be- well, I went two days, but I did not see very much stuff. We well, I went to Shanghai, <laughs> Disney Imagineering Pavilion, right. and then the next day we went to Avatar in Shanghai. Yeah. And that was it as far as the pavilions. That seems to be the, the consensus, though, from everyone I talked to. Yeah, we, had, we spent three days there, and we didn't see a whole heck of a yeah. lot of anything. But we, did, yeah. we were there. It, it was all that like good stuff. There's like lots of booths set up for signings. Yes. And the panels I, I've given up on. Like, did unless you see any gonna, this year at all? No. no? Okay. You unless you're going to like wait in line for yeah. four hours, like... Watch it's them too bad. The next day, anyway. Did you see any panels or no? Not in person, no. You saw them online, right? Yeah, you go on YouTube and watch. Them. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Somebody cuts them down to five minutes for you. Too, yeah, they so get all the highlights, highlights in. You don't need to hear all yeah. the crap in between. Yeah, I get exactly. It. Um, was there anything that you like aside from the uh, Pandora? I think Pandora is the yeah, answer. I think. Pandora, anything right? else that you really took away that you really enjoyed from the expo? I I love the Toy Story truck. 
Oh, the, yeah. the, the pizza planet that? truck. The pizza planet amazing. truck. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty yeah. incredible. It was Marco Bongiorno. He's the guy who made the truck. Is that his real name? That's right. Yeah. His real a birth name. That can't be real. I'm telling you. That's got to be a joke, you guys. Nope. I'm telling you. <laughs> and it He's was, a wonderful man. It was so detailed. I just, I mean, he, he in showed the back, me. In the they had the tennis ball right. and the crush can. Yeah, yeah they went all yeah. out. Yeah. Actually, I was talking to one of them, I forget who it was, but he said when they drove it up to Pixar for the first time, they left it really dirty, just like it was in the movie, and just before they got there, it was like torrential downpour, yeah. oh. completely cleaned the truck, and they were so mad about it. <laughs> but it was pretty cool that like D23 brought in these yeah. fans to, yeah. like, to showcase their awesome. thing. I wish there was a little bit more of that kind of stuff, but yeah. right. what are you going to do? So just to, to wrap up, where, where can they find you guys on the internet? You can find us at DrunkOnDisney.com and then anything else if you Google Drunk on Disney. It's, it's probably us or some other drunks. Yeah, or drunk. What's the guy drunk at Disney? Yeah. There's like five people There's who a do a people. side note of what... Disney drunkards. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. You're, you're drunk on Disney. I think we're the original drunks at Disney, though. Well, we have to be. We're the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Sometimes you might see it, sometimes you don't. Hey, look, what's that? It's a five-legged goat. <laughs> okay, now we have a very special five-legged goat from Leo about in an interaction he had with the mustache himself, Tony Baxter. So what, what happened when you saw Tony Baxter? Well, we were talking, and he said, like... Have you seen the Hatbox Ghost? Because I had a ghost with your shirt on. And, he, and I said, well, really, you should re-record the thing because you're going to need to say, the thing is going to need to say, there is a thousand happy haunts here. <laughs> there's no, there's room for no more, sorry. <laughs> And what did Tony say after that? He said, like, he said, what podcast are you on? Uh, and, and, he, and he said, who are you with? And, he, and I said, Jeff. And he said, no, my name is Tony, Tony Baxter. <laughs> this is the best goat ever. <laughs> so should I be careful that Tony Baxter is going to be looking for me now? Yeah. <laughs> what is he going to do? He's going to say, are you the famous Jeff? <laughs> Fair enough. I'll take that one. Now, before we finish up the show, just wanted to jump in with the winner for this week's Year of a Million or So Limited Time Cadets. Now, again, the winner is going to get a, a copy of the 10-inch single of the Skeleton Dance and the Three Little Pigs from the Silly Symphony Collection, which, again, you can pre-order at sillysymphonycollection.com. It's the 16-record set, and trust me, I saw it in person. It's amazing. Uh, it's really, really cool, and they worked really, really hard on it. So if you're interested in that, you should totally pick it up. It's totally worth the money. But the winner for this week's episode is Esmeralda G from Lake Balboa, California. Congratulations, Esmeralda. I hope you enjoy the record. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you all for listening to our D23 episode. A anything, last words you want to say, Leo? Well, bye. Thank you for listening to the greatest online show called Communicore Weekly. Aw, thanks, Leo. Do you want to do the For George, I'm Leo? For George Taylor... I'm Leo. And for Jeff, I'm Jeff. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Hello? And welcome to Communicore Weekly, the greatest online show and home of the world's first pair of independently born, identical twins. I'm George. Hello? Hello? Is anybody there? Hello? Um, okay, this is weird.